Hello everyone. If you're new here, I'm Lindsay. Welcome to my channel. Today I'm sharing with you my 2022 backpacking gear, starting with my big three. I'll be doing a series of all the different categories of my backpacking gear for this season. So stay tuned for the additional categories in my kit. And then at the end, I'll do an overview of all of the gear that I'll be taking with me on backpacking trips this year. So what I have on the schedule is a short backpacking trip to Pictured Rocks National Lake Shore. I've got a trip to the Appalachian Trail planned, although that one is an end-to-end, hostel-to-hostel type hiking situation, so I won't carry all of this gear. I will be attempting a through hike of the Tahoe Rim Trail in California and Nevada. That is my biggest backpacking trip that I have this planned this summer. And I also am planning some shorter trips more around where I live in the Pacific Northwest for August and September. So let's get started. My backpack is the Gossamer Gear Mariposa 60 liter backpack. This is super lightweight. It comes in at 31.5 ounces. So it's just under the two pound mark. It is a framed backpack. It's got a small, thin metal frame on the inside, which I love. I was not ready to go to a completely frameless backpack. It's got one giant interior pocket that you can load up pretty tall. It's got a top closing flap with a pocket on the top where you can fit things like hat, gloves, those sorts of things that you need quickly and easy access to. It's got a large mesh pocket on the front, which I love, it's super stretchable. On the side, it's got a gigantic side pocket where I keep my tent. And on the other side, this is one of my favorite features of this backpack, it's got a double-decker pocket system so I can put all of my water and filtration stuff in this bottom pocket. In the top pocket, I can keep my medical first aid bag as well as my potty bag. So I really love the design of this bag. On the back, there's a mesh foam pad, not mesh, it's a foam pad, but it's got little breathable holes in it. This is technically removable and can be used as a sit pad, but I bring a different sit pad with me because it is quite a bit of work to take it in and out of here, but this ensures some comfort and some breathability along your back. On my straps, I have some extra things loaded in here. I have Justin's Ultralight, which is an Etsy shop. This is the water bottle holder that I love. I also have the Gossamer Gear hands-free umbrella clip attachment. I have a little REI microfiber cloth towel here as a snot sweat rag. That is a must for me. And then I really love the hip belts on, the hip belt pockets on this pack. They are large, so I fit things like my headlamp, chapstick, sunscreen, my compede stick. There are two of them. They're equal size, one on each side. And the other thing I really love about the hip belt pockets on this pack is that they're easily reachable when you are wearing the pack. So you can very easily grab what you need, even just with one hand. So that is my backpack. Up next is my tent. I also have a Gossamer Gear tent. This is a single wall tent called The One. It's a one person tent. It is pretty roomy inside though, I will say. It's taken a little bit of an adjustment for me to switch from a double walled tent to a single walled tent, but I'm getting used to it. I keep a little microfiber cloth inside of my tent to use to wipe the condensation down in the mornings, but I love this. This thing is just under 18 ounces. It is so incredibly lightweight. As I said, it fits nicely in the pocket on my backpack and it is incredibly easy and pretty foolproof to set up. For my tent stakes, I'm using the tent stake bag that came with the tent, but I have different stakes. So this tent actually requires a minimum of six stakes to set up, but I use 12 stakes with it because I like to stake down the four corners of the bathtub. I also like to stake out the guy lines just to keep my tent walls as dry as possible. So for the four bathtub corners, I use these really thin and light shepherd's hooks. These are perfect for the bathtub corners. For the two guy lines, I use these small, I, I'm not sure if these are, I think these are groundhog stakes. stakes. I'm actually not sure the brand or where I got these from, but these are smaller. And then for all of the four corners of the tent, as well as the vestibule doors, and then the little 
upside down V-shaped vent part on the side of the tent that doesn't have doors, I use these Z-Pax Supersonic stakes. These are seven or seven and a half inches. They're very sturdy. I don't mess around with having super lightweight, non-reliable tent stakes. I like to have the real good ones as light as possible, but still, in my opinion, heavy duty and super reliable, even in windy, rainy, whatever conditions. So those are all of my tent stakes. And the last part of my tent setup is my ground cloth. I really like to have a ground cloth to protect the very fragile fabric of my ultra lightweight tent. I also really like a ground cloth to lay down for lunch, for stretching, for yoga, just to keep myself a little bit cleaner. So this is essentially a piece of Tyvek. I purchased this from Six Moon Designs, which is a company that's local to me. I'm here in Portland, Oregon. And with one small fold, it fits perfectly under my tent. And it's just a great little ground cloth. It's super durable and reliable. Yes, it's kind of crinkly, but I like it a lot more than the Polycro that I tried from Gossamer Gear. So I am going with this one for backpacking. It's also pretty lightweight. And finally, I've got my sleep system. I'm just going to say up front that I'm a cold sleeper, so the things that I've chosen might reflect that, but I've also tried to go lightweight as well. So for my sleeping pad, I have the very infamous yellow crinkly sleeping pad that many people have. This is the Thermarest Neo Air X Lite. I have it in the women's. It has a 5.4 R value, which is incredible for a sleeping pad that this that is this lightweight. I'm five foot five and this sleeping pad is five foot six. And I was really worried at first that it would be too short for me, but it works great, particularly because what I do is often put my backpack behind my head and I put my pillow slanted up on my backpack because I do like to sleep on a little bit of a slant. So I'll be bringing this as well as the included pump sack, which I have to say is a little bit of a pain to use. I always find that it takes me a whole bunch of times filling this thing up to be able to fill up my pad, but it saves my breath, my mouth, it saves the pad from getting wet and moldy, etc. So it is going to be worth it. And I also like to have this because I fold these two things up together and put them in the back pocket in my inside my backpack, like right against my back. And I find that this just adds a little layer of protection because I don't bring the bag or anything. For my pillow, I have the Nemo Philo Elite. This is a hybrid pillow. It's got some foam in it, but then it's also blow up as well. The one thing I also really like about this pillow is that the stuff sack that it goes in is attached to it. So you can never lose it, which is amazing. So it just stays attached to it. You can just tuck it in, blow it up, and it's just got this kind of nicer feel, softer, fabric-y feel than a classic blow-up pillow. Don't get me wrong, it still feels pretty much like a blow-up pillow, but I really enjoy this. And this thing weighs just under three ounces at 2.9 ounces and is worth every ounce. And finally, for my sleeping bag, I have upgraded to a Z-Pax sleeping bag. This is the 10 degrees sleeping bag. It's got the enclosed foot box and then the essentially three quarter zipper that goes all the way up to the top. I am converting from my mummy bag. I really love my REI Jewel 21 degree mummy bag, but it is heavy. This thing only weighs 23 ounces, so it's saving me almost a pound, I believe, over my REI one. I did end up getting this in the standard size, which fits people up to six feet tall, which, is, which essentially means that because I'm 5'5", five five, I can climb into this thing, zip it all the way up, and have it pretty much completely over my head. So I'm really excited to try this one out. It's also got a higher, well, really lower temperature rating, but I think will keep me warmer. It is stuffed to the gills with down, and I'm really hoping that this thing will keep me warm. I have not had a chance to test this out. I purchased this 
in April, but I didn't get it in time for a camping trip that I did in April. And then I was going to test it out on a May camping trip and I got COVID for 10 days and I'm still kind of recovering from COVID, but I didn't have a chance to test this out and I won't be able to until my first short backpacking trip, but I will have a chance to test it out before the Tahoe Rim Trail, just in case something seems not right with it and I need to switch. I really hope not because this thing was expensive, but I really like it so far. It's got a little cinch at the top if you want to cinch around your neck. And I'm hoping that this can be a nice in-between of a mummy bag and a quilt, which I don't think I'm quite ready for or maybe never will be. So that is my big three. Everything combined together is just under six pounds. I'm very pleased with this big three. Of course, if you have any comments or suggestions, leave them down below and stay tuned for my next video, which will be a detailed overview of all of the clothing that I plan on bringing backpacking this summer. See you in the next one. Bye.